In uncertain days, it is important to remember that our world is getting ready to meet God. We are all getting ready to meet Him. The King is coming. Today, we join Scott Pauley in walking through the final book of the Bible, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, my friend, we are all getting ready to meet God. And in light of that, there are certain things we must give attention to, certain things we must be doing. We're studying on the last page of our Bible, Revelation chapter 22. We've discovered that there are three occasions where our Lord says He's coming, and His coming ought to affect our living. Now, the final promise is in Revelation 22 verse 20. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Did you notice that this final promise begins a little differently than the other two? Now, the first two begin with the word, Behold. Behold, I come quickly, verse 7. Behold, I come quickly, verse 12. I like that word, behold. It's, it's a word of attention. But in the third and final promise, in verse number 20, he begins with the word, surely. Behold is a word of attention, but surely is a word of assurance. So in this, in this particular instance where he says he's coming, he says, I want to give you my word on it. I want to give you my assurance of it. There is no doubt about it. When our Lord taught uh, here on this earth, He very often would say, Truly, truly, or verily, verily, I say unto you. It's the same idea as saying, Surely, surely I come quickly. Look, you can rest your hope, your faith, your peace today on the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has always kept His word, and He is always going to keep His word. It's impossible for God to lie. And listen, Everything he foretells, he always fulfills. So be very sure of this, Jesus is coming. Uh, you'll also notice that he added a word here uh, to, to this particular promise. He added his amen. Surely I come quickly, amen. What is amen? Well, it's certainly a word of agreement. We use the word amen, but amen is actually one of our Lord's names. He is the faithful and true amen. It's almost like the Lord writing a check and signing His name to it. Do you see it? Surely I come quickly. And then, just to be sure you understand how serious He is, we have His name on it. He has written here, Amen. I love this word, quickly, as well. Uh, you'll remember that he, he said earlier He was coming shortly. Now He adds this, that He's coming surely. He's coming quickly, no doubt about it. You see, God's people always have something to look forward to, and we have something to be doing while we wait. We began in verse number 14 in our last study with this verse, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now, this particular verse has been misunderstood, uh, misinterpreted, and misapplied. Some people take this verse to teach almost a works-based salvation. That the idea is, it's all about our doing. And it's all about us earning the right to the tree of life. And it's the only way you're going to get into the gates, into the city. But you must compare Scripture with Scripture. You see, when the Bible refers here to doing His commandments, we're not talking here about the obedience that begins with works. We're talking about the obedience that begins with faith. In fact, I showed you in our last study in Romans, in Thessalonians, in 1 Peter, and in 1 John, this expression that we are to obey the gospel. That's where it begins, with obeying the simple gospel message. You can't obey all of His other commands until you have obeyed this. And that's because you can't live the Christian life apart from Christ. You can't do all the things you're supposed to do until you have believed on the Lord Jesus and Christ comes to live inside of you. He's the one who empowers you to live a life of obedience. And that's why, for example, there's so much confusion that surrounds the book of James because there's so much emphasis on works. And uh, yet, you must compare Scripture with Scripture. James is not teaching something different than Paul taught. James is simply saying if you have real faith, that faith is going to evidence itself by the way you live your life, by a life of obedience. 
And so we begin with this. What time is it? We know the time is late. We know the time of Christ coming is soon. What time is it? First of all, it is a time for obeying. This is a time to obey, and we must begin by obeying the gospel. Notice that there are two categories of people in these verses. Uh, first of all, there are those who are within the city. The Bible says in verse 14, they may enter in through the gates into the city. And in verse 15, there are those who are without. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. There's a, there's a great division. My friend, there's a great division today. You may not see it this way, but this is the way God sees it at this moment. It's not it's not divided by race. It's not divided by economic standing. It's not divided by educational background. It's not divided by professional experience. It's not divided by political parties. No, no, the great division is always spiritual. There are those who know God and those who do not know God. And someday what is known to God now will be known to everyone. It will be plain and evident which category you fall into. Are you within or are you without? In Paul's writings, we have those who are in Christ and those who are outside of Christ. We have those who are in the family of God and those who are outside of the family of God. And that simply is going to be completely revealed someday by the division of those who go into the city and those that are left outside of the city. On April the 14th, 1912, at 11.40 at night, when the Titanic hit that iceberg and sunk to the bottom of the ocean, Though on board that ship, there were several classes of passengers. In the end, there really were only two. There were those that were saved, and there were those that were lost. And what was true then is true now spiritually. Of every person listening to me, you either belong to the Lord or you do not. Only two categories. And notice, there are not only two categories, there are two claims. The Bible says that those who have obeyed Him... They have right to the tree of life. Now, we understand that we have no right to heaven on our own, so this can't be something we've earned. The word right here is the same word as the word power. You remember the same man who wrote Revelation wrote John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 12 says that those who receive Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. In other words, he gives us the right. It is Christ's righteousness that gives us the power, the access, the, uh, the freedom to go in to the tree of life. This is thrilling to me, but my claim is Christ. And friend, if, if you do not know Christ, you have no claim to Christ. You have no reason or right to enter in. Uh, do you see the tree of life here? Remember, Adam and Eve were not allowed to eat of the tree of life. So what man was not trusted with after his fall... Uh, we will be given someday. Isn't that glorious? And who gives us the right? Not Adam, but the second Adam, the perfect Adam, the God-man, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have these two categories. We have these two claims. Uh, we have this one condition that God gives. What's the one condition? Blessed are they that do His commandments. Might I ask you again, do you know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? Have you obeyed the gospel? Or are you living in verse 15? without, or dogs, that's religious people, but they, they devour sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters. And if you say, well, I don't belong to that category, listen to this, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Are you living in the truth today, or are you living a lie? Repeatedly throughout Revelation 20 and Revelation 21, now again in Revelation 22, God puts the liars in that list of those who will be cast into the lake of fire my friend, Jesus is coming, and this is the time for obeying the Word of God. This is the time for obeying the truth. This is the time to obey the gospel. I wonder today, will you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved? The purpose of all Scripture is to see God. In Revelation, the curtain is pulled back and we are reminded not to simply look at world events, but to look to Christ. We hope you will join us next time as Scott Pauley continues our study through this amazing book of the Bible. You may also join us right now for additional studies and a library of helpful resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. You will find several new features at our online home and we trust they will be a blessing to you as you walk with God. 
Plan to visit us each day at enjoyingthejourney.org, and we look forward to returning to Revelation on our next broadcast. Keep your eyes on Christ and look up. The King is coming.